Guys, I'm sorry if it's hard to hear me because of that constant drilling. That right there. Trying to have a nice day by the pool. Nobody's here. Oh, except for her. I don't know where she came from. Hello. She's not from England. <laughs> uh, this is talk Australian. This is a little bit, oh, that was Australian. <laughs> this is a little bit better in Chicago weather right now, huh? Yes, Chicago is cold. It's like snowing. It was snowing. It was, it was, but she lives in Phoenix right now. She came out to see me. She's shooting with Iron Man magazine. Gosh, I hate that drill. So painful. I'm actually doing work out here. Yeah, so I'm dealing with that, dealing with some just busy stuff. Gonna be out in Sweden. Um, I have three days off in between this in the in between the fitness guy lawn and body power. So Sweden to England, I have three days in there. Might go to London, might go to Norway. Where do you guys think I should go in Sweden or in Europe really? It's everywhere's pretty close. Um also, things coming up, I'll be at the Salt Lake FitCon Expo on the 29th and 30th of April. Jeez, this guy's annoying. Seriously. The gym, the gym, uh, this is the gym slash resort. So it has uh, two stories I've showed you to you guys before. The stairs and not there. Don't look at that. Eyes right here, up there. That's where the gym, the stairs are. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be in Salt Lake. Come check it out. I'll have a booth selling Soldier Nation stuff as well as I'll MC the pro show on Saturday. I've never MC'd a pro show and I'm kind of nervous. So that's that's really what we've been dealing with this morning, posting a shooting schedule. I'm gonna do a Q&A today for you guys. Um, lots of questions on the big programming that just dropped. Gonna head over to Gold's Gym, get a workout here, maybe see what Callum's up to. He just got back from FIBO. Um, maybe go train there and then um, tonight, got a meeting this weekend. I'm gonna go look at cars in Las Vegas. So let's go. So, I love frozen ice cream. I do. It's part of me. I love it. Um, I can't always eat it though. But I can eat protein ice cream with rice puffs on top. This is my pre-workout snack I ate about an hour ago. I'm gonna go to the gym in about 20 minutes. So I'm getting about 20 grams of protein here and I'm gonna just sprinkle sprinkle some of these on top because they're just, it's like toppings at the, the frozen yogurt place. Just add some variety of texture to that. This little one showed me how to make it. So, it's going down. It's going down on the countertop, making protein ice cream, then going to the gym. Oh, it's so creamy and good. Arm day here at the Mecca. It's nice outside. So the best part about this gym is you can go inside or outside. Got the tiny little little stringer going on today because we got a sick pump. Um, arms, cardio. I'm gonna do a little stretching, little yoga, broga. Actually, broga is a real thing. I've never done it, but I want to. Um, hitting the arms, a little bit of a with lifting work. Just some some cleans in there. I hit my abs in between my arms too, just because I like hitting abs a little bit more often. Um, and then we're gonna be doing some treadmill sprints. Good old treadmill sprints. That, or maybe some row sprints just to blow up the arms. My name's Steven, Steven Cook. What a question and answer series for you guys today out here in the park. So I asked some questions on Twitter and I figured I'd get to some of those today. So the first question is Steve, are you ever going to compete again? Maybe. Maybe is that answer. I would like to compete again. Um, got a lot going on. Sometimes competing takes away from the long-term vision because you gotta be so focused on competing. So I would love to compete, especially if I feel like I could do well, because I like winning. 
I like winning. A wise man once said, if you ain't first, you're last. Just kidding, I don't really subscribe to that. If you ain't happy, you're last. If you're happy, you're winning. So if, I, if I'm in a good place with life and don't have a ton of traveling going on, and I feel like I could do well on a show, um, and I'm having fun with it, then yes, I will probably compete sometime this year. If I'm having fun with it and want to. So that's a maybe. Next question. This one comes from my good friend. Actually, I don't know him. His name's John Rushbrook. His question. Steve Cook, no more underscore 32. I appreciate you guys getting that. How do you stay healthy, balanced mentally, spiritually, physically, in an often really unhealthy industry? That's a great question. I'll get actually serious with you guys on this one. I really only stay balanced because I remind myself constantly um, and I like to kind of separate myself from a lot of the things in the industry. So I assume when you say the industry, you mean the competing industry, the supplement business industry, the overall fitness. And what I've come to learn is so many people in this industry will sacrifice their health. You know, people would, would smoke if it keeps them skinny. Some people do smoke and they promote a healthy lifestyle. There is definitely um, a difference between being healthy, being fit, and being just completely shredded like so i think there, there's a, a fine line there that, that's that's the key to life i feel like if you if you can stay balanced if you can balance work family goal like if you can balance all of that that's really i think the secret to this life because anytime that we get um, a little bit carried away too much with one goal and, and one aspect of your life you, you don't you don't work on the other areas like you should be so when setting up goals i think it's important to address not just one area of your life. Like you should have fitness goals, you should have health goals, you should have image goals. If you wanna look a certain way, that's, that's okay, but it can't be the only thing. You need to have goals that um, are gonna be career, gonna be personal, gonna be spiritual, gonna be mental. So uh, yeah, kind of hopefully that answers your question, Jono. <laughs> I didn't wash my hands and I should have, don't tell. Um, next question. Sorry, had to use the head real quick. That's what they call it in other countries. I'm not just a pervert. Um, Juan underscore C underscore Ortiz asked, if I wasn't in the fitness industry, if I hadn't been successful in the fitness industry, thank you for calling me successful, um, what else do I think I would have been doing? That question sometimes scares me to death. I stay up late at night and think, if I woke up tomorrow and all of a sudden I had nothing else going on, what would I do? And then I remember, just like anything in life, the only reason you're here or the only reason you have any kind of success at all is because of hard work. So I would take that hard work and I would take that same kind of discipline and stick to itiveness, $10 word, and I would apply it to another area of my life. So I have been successful in the fitness industry, somewhat I would say up to this point, nowhere I'm not complacent. I'm not necessarily um, content, I guess, with staying there. I want to I want to move things bigger. I want to push things further. My biggest thing is I want people to just see how fitness is one area of their life that can help enhance all these other areas of your life. The, these goals, you can do anything if you want. You can have that, that mental toughness to have a vision of what you want to look like and what you want to create in life and do it and change it. You can change anything else in your life. So to kind of answer this question, what else would I, do I see myself doing? Maybe being a high school coach and a high school teacher and really helping mold high school kids, really helping kids live up to their potential. Because I think so many people out there don't know where to start. They're afraid of failing. It, you know, and, and I think about things like if I had been afraid to do some of these things, people told me, Steve, there's no money in the fitness industry. This is before men's physique. There's no money in the fitness industry. Um, there's only bodybuilders, only the top five bodybuilders make it. I would never have done this. If I had a fear of failing, I would never have done this because there's so many people that said you can't. And there's really, there, there's no, there was no blueprint, I guess, for what I was doing. You know, you looked up at people like Arnold, who's a bodybuilder, Greg Putt, who was with Metrics, and you know, I saw Greg at tons and tons of expos, but I feel like with, there was, there, if there's a, a will, there's gonna be a way. And um, I can't imagine doing anything else in my life, but if I did, I'd probably be like a high school coach. My dad was a high school coach, my brother was a high school coach. I love being around kids and athletes and people that are really, you know, have a passion for something. And that typically, for me, has been sports and working out. 
that passion though, you can transfer it into anything else. My older sister, like I said, she's a doctor. Her passion is education and teaching people. You know, she's a professor at University of Portland. If you're there, make sure you say what's up. Her, her, she's Dr. McLean. Next question. My friend Leo, his Instagram name or Twitter name is Leo. Wow, okay, how do you say this one? It's Leo Noastheti one. <laughs> Bro, Snapchat came strong, Leo. All right, um, Leo, so he asked me, oh shiz, it's frozen. Leo asked Steve Cook, what uh, supplements do you actually use and when? That's a great question. I don't know if I'm gonna tell you guys because I love a lot of supplements and that's gonna take a lot of time to answer. Um, these are kind of my daily gist. There's just a lot in there. Um, we'll leave that open. I got nothing to hide. So, OptiMen, CLA, DHEA. Okay, here's a couple of the supplements I take and why. Um, Platinum Hydro A, probably my favorite whey protein powder. A lot of people, even from other companies, take Hydro A. It's low in lactose. It's super smooth. Um, it's really the only protein drink that I take. I might use others to mix and make shakes with, but that's the only one I like drinking post-workout. Glutamine powder, just recovery. Um, leucine, obviously this one is an optimum nutrition. Hopefully I don't get in trouble for that. Leucine, amino acid, helps promote protein synthesis. Optimin, multivitamin, L-carnitine. I got freaking stacks on stacks on stacks of amino energy in here because I can't live without it. I love, oh, creatine too. There's another guy who asked about creatine. Creatine monohydrate, we've talked about this before. I use it, one of the most research. This is the, this is the basic creatine monohydrate. It's been around since, you know, the studies were done on it in the 90s. It's gonna create more more water within the cell. I don't get off of it for shows or shoots. I stay right on creatine th throughout the whole thing. Creatine's important because what happens when you're breaking down muscle, as you're in the gym, you're doing sets, seven, eight, nine, 10, your body's using ATP for fuel, adenosine triphosphate. Creatine comes in and it donates one of those phosphagen groups. So adenosine tri triphosphate, there's three of them. When you're working out, it uses a phosphate group. You need, it then becomes adenosine diphosphate and can't be used. So creatine, by saturating the cells, Creatine allows for ADP to become ATP um, and thus help you, you know, really in that 10 to 12, 15 reps in there. So creatine is definitely one I like. A greens powder, I've been hoping, you know, Owen, hopefully we come out with one like this because I really like a product like this. This just has your greens in there. Um, vitamin C, carnitine, um, alpha lipoic acid, and DHEA. Some people are surprised I take DHEA. Um, Went to the doctor and he recommended it. I'd never really, had, you know, done a ton of research on DA. I started looking at it. And I think, you know, as you get older, which I'm getting pretty old, guys, 30, 30 years old, 31, DHEA is going to be something that um, I, I take more often. And then, yeah, L carnitine. So that's kind of a look, basic supplements. Um, oh, at night a sleep aid just to kind of shut off the brain casing if I'm going to be making a crazy shake but again it gives me kind of bubble guts so oftentimes I'll just use the natural way with that because I like the way it mixes you again can't get rid of you guys in my fridge come on all right I'll give you a couple more Q&A answers um, Jake Drabisky Buckeyes 456 asks Steve Cook, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Hopefully, opening the fridge and not seeing you guys in here. Just kidding, I love you. Um, in 10 years, I see myself not in LA. I see myself in a beautiful house with a beautiful gym that's either attached to the house or separate in the city that I live in, 
Boise, maybe St. George, maybe like Scottsdale, Arizona, somewhere where life's a little bit slower paced. I see myself having a big garden, um, growing all my own fresh vegetables, having a couple of little blonde head kids running around, still like continuing my education. So maybe having a master's or a doctorate in exercise physiology or some kind of nutrition thing, as well as obviously being married. And then I think traveling a ton still, but doing it because just for sheer pleasure, doing seminars, um, having seminars at the gym that I own, just giving giving that information back, um, and still working, you know, hopefully with my own supplement line with Optimum Nutrition. Hopefully, um, Teddy, Spivey Eddie, who's his name? Steve Cook. What's it living in LA so far in your new place? I'm gonna say, what's it like living in LA so far in your new place? It's pretty awesome. Uh, my new place is beautiful. Um, I live in Playa Vista, it's kind of like a little biodome. I can walk to everything. It's it's pretty, um, I wish I did have a little bit more food in my fridge. I wish I didn't have room for a camera in there. Um, I'm a little low on Icon meals right now. I could also do some cooking. I think I still remember how to cook. Didn't cook almost all last month because in Australia. Um, but it's been pretty good. Got a new TV, still waiting on some furniture. I need to do that. Oh. My freezer is mad at you guys because you're in my fridge and the door is open. So I got to run. I needed this avocado though. Thanks. Things are, we're slowing things down here. Evening time has set in at the Cook residence. It's a beautiful spring evening here in LA. I'm going to answer your questions. Um, last question. Looking for a follow-up to the modern physique suggestions. I happen to have a great one. Just came out with the program Big. I don't even really want to push it because I've been pushing it enough. Um, it's cool. Let's get to the point. There's a lot of freaking people out there to do online training. I think most of them, I'm calling bullshit on it. And I haven't done online training in the past because I, don't, I didn't have time to sit down in front of a computer and say, and I didn't want to say, hey, yeah, I can take on clients and then have somebody else doing it. I didn't want that. So what I did instead is I came up with the same guys that helped me out with my programming. I sat down them with them. We did, I kind of gave them the, the bodybuilding aspects. They kind of came back to me with kind of more of the exercise physiology. So the stuff I was doing in college, when I played college football and came up with a program. There's gonna be a coaching on with form. I'm gonna be getting on the Facebook page. Um, so everything is based on one rep maxes and progressively getting stronger. The interface that you're using Team Builder is, it keeps you accountable, sends you workouts daily, weekly, um, I guarantee if people do it, they will see results like no other. And I could be straight up honest with you when, when I tell people that the same guys that do my programming helped with this. Um, but again, it's not like I'm sitting there each day or each week checking in on everyone. If you guys think that the people out there that always are accepting clients, they have no cap. If you have more than, think about this, if you have more than 50 clients, how much time are you really giving people? Some of these people are making like $50,000 a month online training, but it's not really them. They're having some personal trainer answer all the questions. I didn't want it to be like that. So I wanted to be transparent with people. Um, you know, it's, I'm doing the program right now with everyone. It's the second time I've been through it. I went through it once and kind of made some tweaks and changes. So I think people will like it. Let's answer one more question. Um, Steve Cook, what do you think are the biggest fitness trends currently? That's AJM24. AJM24, the bit, biggest fitness trends currently. Um, I'm glad to see there's starting to become people that are more educated online. You know, for the longest time, I think people on social media, if they had a lot of followers, they just thought that they were experts on things. I'm not an expert on things. I, mean, I don't claim to be. I have a bachelor's degree in biology and psychology. I think it makes me a little bit more qualified than just somebody off the street who lost some weight for a show and or a bikini show or a physique show and all of a sudden started talking about it. Um, I've also been doing it for a while. That being said, there's people that I refer to all the time. You can't stop learning. But I like seeing that there's more education going into things. There's more um, light on if it fits your macros. I think hopefully that's a trend that sticks around. Um, waist trainers, hopefully that's a trend that's on its way out. If you're wearing waist trainers, what are you, re it's squeezing like, Really, these waist trainers are getting to be more like corsets, which is just squeezing your internal organs, pushing them up. Not the healthiest things. Lay off the waist trainers. Um, it's different between a lifting belt when you work out or something that keeps things tight when you work out and then wearing one for the rest of the day. A lot of people sitting in saunas 
before workouts and after workouts. I don't really see the point in that. Um, if you guys know if there's like some health benefit I haven't read, let me know. Also, startup supplement companies everywhere. People, people um, pretty much having another company, and I know this for a fact, having another company, there's only a couple large companies out there that make their own supplements. All these other smaller companies, they're generic and they get made somewhere else and they slap their label on them. Um, so I think people need to watch out for just everyone starting a, a supplement company. Unless it's a big company that has a lot of backing and manufacturing, they're not making their own products. So I can definitely tell you off of them is, they're 600,000 square foot warehouse, I've been there, but that's one I don't really like. I'm seeing more and more in, in like, just in clothing, I'm seeing a lot of gym wear that resembles more like street wear and vice versa. Like there's more street wear that you can wear to the gym and more gym wear that's okay in the street. Like what I'm wearing right now, it could be worn in the street or it could be worn in the gym. Um, I think that's pretty much it for me. You guys don't have to go home, but you have to GTFO because I am watching GOT. That's a lot of acronyms right there. A lot of, I think that's an acronym. So you guys have to go. I would stay and cuddle, but I haven't showered and I don't want it to be awkward. Steve, you kind of smell, can you go shower? I don't want to shower, this is my house. I want to watch Game of Thrones. GTFO, I love you. You know, sometimes at the end of a long, hard day, you just need this. I get pizza all the time. Somebody called me out on Twitter earlier today because I claimed I eat pizza as well, and they said, prove it, Steve. So there you are. I'm eating this. Chandler's eating that. I'm probably gonna have a bite of Chandler. Of Chandler's pizza too. Yeah, right. Wait, let me get a good angle on this. Cordy's over here trying to snap our pizza. <laughs> Get that perfect snap. It doesn't do it justice, you guys. Yeah, it really does it. Chicken? Yeah! Am I in your shot? Am I in your shot? I'm stealing a bite. What slice you want to give me? I'm living out in LA. I drive a sports car just to prove. I'm a real big baller cause I made a million dollars and I spend it on girls.